succeed, you and your people will pay for this act of aggression. This is the voice of the Mr. Arms. October 2068 saw an historic day, first contact between the human race and an extraterrestrial species. Let us take a closer look. It could have been the beginning of a golden age of interplanetary friendship and cooperation, but instead it led to the outbreak of war between the Earth and Mars. A war of nerves against the Earth. Neither side came looking for conflict. A Zero-X Martian exploration vehicle under the command of Spectrum Agent Captain Black was investigating the source of mysterious radio signals detected on Earth. Those signals we monitored at Spectrum, they must have come from somewhere. And when they discovered the Mysteron complex, Will you take a look at that? Its inhabitants appeared willing to receive them. The first of the Earth space travelers have arrived. We must welcome them. But the MEV's human occupants panicked, mistaking the camera for a weapon and opening fire on the city. They're obviously hostile. Okay, Lieutenant, let them have it. Three shots demolished the complex, plunging the Earth into a war of nerves with a terrifying alien foe which has so far claimed hundreds of lives and which shows no signs of ending anytime soon. It will mean the ultimate destruction of life. The Mysterons are one of the most terrifying aggressors humanity has ever faced, and much of the threat they pose is due to just how little we really know about them. Now this conference has been called to try and assess our knowledge of the Mysterons. Many have speculated that the Mysteron complex is not inhabited by beings as such, but by the computers left behind by the Mysterons after they themselves departed Mars, although it must be pointed out that nothing in the Captain Scarlet television series directly supports this notion. If only we were fighting something we understood, something tangible, something in three dimensions. I know what you mean. We can only hear them over our radios, but I've got a feeling they're with us all the time. It is, however, not inconsistent with the somewhat ritualistic approach taken to each of their attacks on Earth, first making a public threat against, usually, a clearly identified target. Our first act of retaliation will be to assassinate your world president. That is when they're not making more cryptic threats. Tomorrow you will Kill time. Then using Mysteronized agents to achieve their aims, and so on. It's all beginning to fit. It could also partly account for their single minded fixation on punishing the people of Earth for the destruction of the Mysteron complex, a complex that they could and did reconstruct intact and undamaged anyway. That's a good point. However, Mysteron logic is often difficult to follow. Need Verdun alive. With their plans veering from sensible and practical to absurdly over elaborate on a weekly basis. The Mysterons have powers we cannot hope to understand. The Mysterons have displayed many incredible abilities. Go ahead, Captain Scarlet. Colonel. I have to report complete security clearance on the conference center. But chief among these is the power of retrometabolism, the ability to reconstruct under their control any person or object that has been killed or destroyed. He is almost certainly now a Mysteron. The ability was first demonstrated to the Zero X MEV crew when the Mysteron complex miraculously restored itself after their attack. As you have just witnessed, and has since been employed in almost every operation they have launched against the Earth. All the time we know that somewhere, somehow, the Mysterons are making plans to carry out their threat. The first step of their plan often involves engineering the death or destruction of something or someone that they feel can help them accomplish their objectives, while also occasionally taking advantage of fatal accidents. The report then describes an eyewitness account of a reconstruction as it actually happened. Once this is done, two translucent green rings of light will pass over the body as the Mysterons scan their victim, and soon a reconstruction of them will appear close by, ready to carry out their instructions from the Mysterons. I understand. What are my orders? The body of the original victim, or debris of the vehicle that has been reconstructed, is rarely disposed of or well hidden, and is instead left behind for anyone to discover, often serving as a vital clue to aid Spectrum's investigations. The body of a Professor Carney has been discovered. He'd been 
dead for some time, but a second Professor Carney has been seen less than an hour ago. Once again, it is difficult to conjecture what this says about their thinking. Do they eventually clear up these messes off screen? Or do they leave behind the evidence on purpose, just to toy with Spectrum as part of their ongoing war of nerves? You mustn't let them break your nerve. How much or how little of the personality or memories of the original victim remain in the reconstruction is unclear. Some Mr. On agents appear capable of operating as normal until they are discovered, while others seem completely unable to hide the fact that something has happened to them from the moment they are reborn. Dr. Breck, are you alright? Fine, Captain. I'm fine. Occasionally, when killed in vehicle accidents, dead human beings are not physically reconstructed along with their machines, but are instead only heard over the radio. As with the pilot of Helicopter A-42 in the first episode, the Delta Tango 19 crew and passengers in Winged Assassin, and the SKR-4 crew in Inferno. It's the way they talk. They seem, well, different. Mr. On agents rarely survive to see their missions completed, with only a handful escaping a second death, such as the garage mechanic in Special Assignment and the models Helga and Gabrielle in Model Spy. You will never beat us! Most die in combat against Spectrum agents, <coughs> although several have voluntarily self-destructed in an attempt to kill their target. Who are you? The only agent the Mistrons seem determined to keep is the man who was ultimately responsible for starting the war between Earth and Mars. It looks like Captain Black. Right. It is indeed. Black does not appear to have been killed and reconstructed, but instead possessed by some Mistron force. One of you will be under our control. Evident in his physical transformation to his present gaunt and pallid appearance. From the moment he returned to Earth from the Martian expedition, Captain Black has been working for the Mistrons. Whether any part of the original personality of Spectrum Agent Conrad Turner survives in Captain Black's present form is unknown, as few who encounter him live to speak of it, and all attempts to capture him have so far proven unsuccessful. It's not Captain Black. The only evidence that suggests some part of his original personality still survives is in his treatment of Symphony Angel in the episode Manhunt, where having taken her prisoner, he apologizes for attempting to kill her. I am. Um... I'm sorry, Symphony Angel. And then claims that the Mysterons also have compassion. Before allowing her to escape in order to create a diversion to cover his own getaway. The Mysterons wage a war of nerves. Captain Black gave you a chance to escape and you took it. Such compassion does not appear to be a consideration in his dealings with most other human beings. No! But it could just conceivably hint at Turner's original personality fighting off the Mr. On Control long enough in order to protect a former colleague. I am going to give you one chance. It is notable, however, that unlike other Mr. On agents, Captain Black is not considered a disposable asset and has been teleported to safety on more than one occasion in order to prevent capture by Spectrum and live to fight another day. He must have some sort of sixth sense which warns him. Other abilities demonstrated by the Mistrons include the power to remotely influence people and objects in order to do everything from sabotage equipment to render a person unconscious or dead. The Mistrons have powers we cannot hope to understand. They are also not above conducting major operations without making an accompanying threat to clue Spectrum into their plans. Exactly as the film from the MEV on Mars showed it. A Mysteron complex, and it looks near completion. As shown by the construction of a Mysteron complex in Crater 101 in the Humboldt Sea on the moon. This complex appears to have been entirely constructed by robotic vehicles, and although Spectrum were able to infiltrate the base before it was destroyed, the information they obtained revealed very little, especially since the existence of the complex was later revealed to merely be part of a plot to destroy Cloudbase by overloading the complex's captured power source. So much energy in one tiny pulsator. Despite the phenomenal powers of the Mistrons, they are not infallible. The Mistrons are capable of making mistakes. In the episode Treble Cross, we see them create a reconstruction of Major Gravener, yet when that agent is killed and substituted with the resuscitated original Major Gravener as part of a Spectrum counterplot, they seem unable to tell the difference. The Mistrons think the real Major Gravener is their man. Their attempt on the life of General Tiempo in Operation Time inadvertently revealed that Mistron agents are detectable by X-rays 
disease, the most important point. and that electricity can permanently kill them. While conventional bullets had also been seen to do the job just as well, it is possible that an electrical charge permanently disrupts the Mistron influence. Don't touch him. He's dead, I tell you. Stand back. I don't get it. I was sure he was dead. This is the only gun that kills a Mistron. As seen in the episode Flight 104, when a Mistron controlled aircraft is freed from their influence after overflying a power station. The influence seemed to suddenly fade. The high voltage must have cancelled out the Mistron power over the aircraft. These two vital clues have already provided crucial developments. Uh, firstly, a Mistron detector, and secondly, a Mistron gun. In Spectrum's ongoing efforts to combat the Mistron menace. Spectrum would be very interested to come to terms with the Mistrons. Attempts have also been made to peacefully resolve the war of nerves between the Earth and Mars. The future of the world could well depend on that. Most notably following Spectrum's acquisition of the power source from the Mistron's lunar complex, but so far these attempts have all failed. Obviously we were unable to convince them of our sincerity. But we will try again. Until the day comes when the Mistrons finally do understand, Spectrum will forever remain on the alert to tackle the latest Mistron threat in whatever form it may take. And because of this, I am convinced of our ultimate victory against the Mistrons.